Alright, so today our first topic is going to be filtrations of the enveloping algebra. And yeah, we're going to be carrying on our look at different aspects of the enveloping algebra today. We might be moving on to a pretty big theorem. We might not get there, I don't know. So, to start things off, and we're going to start things off as we always do. Let G be a Lie algebra. over a ring K with T being the tensor algebra of G as a module over K. Gonna let Tn be the submodule of T, be the homogeneous tensors of order n. And we're going to let t to the lower n be the direct sum, be the sum of all such t to the n smaller t to the i smaller than our n or equal to. So we have t to the n be all tensors with and elements, you know, that order, and t to, look, t to the subscript n be homogeneous tensors of order at most n. And then, so what can we say about this t to the n? Obviously we have t to the n is going to be inside t to the n plus 1. We have t0 is going to be k acting on our unit, as always. And from that, we can define t to the negative 1 being the singleton of 0. And we see that the product tn and tp is going to be inside of t to the n plus p because the order of a product can be in most the order of n plus the order of p. Now of course we're going to try to bring everything over to u and be the canonical image of each of these Tn inside you. Which is as of course as always the enveloping algebra of G. Then we have based on our previous results and inference here u to the n is obviously going to be inside u to the n plus 1. u 0 is going to be k acting on 1 in this new context. u to the negative 1 is once again the image of 0 is going to be 0. And always u n, u p is going to be inside of u n plus p. Hence, we have U is filtered 
by this set of un. Now this is a different text than the one where we introduced our concept of filtration before, but I believe it satis this will satisfy all that same axioms of a central series such that this still works as a filter, I hope. That is hearsay though, I will specify here. And we're going to call the elements of un as being of filtration less than or equal to n. Now we're going to, as always, as we saw with the um, filtration on a group, what we did is we we took the quotients of successive um, of these, I don't know if calling them filters is the right term, elements in our filter. And of course we let g be the direct sum of these quotients. Hopefully you remember all this construction. That was in the context of group theory and not in the context of an algebra. But everything kind of seems to be translating over pretty intuitively. And so multiplication in U defines through quotients a bilinear map g to the n and g to the m into their sum which generalizes of course to a bilinear map of g and g to g. And this map is going to be associative. So thus we have G is an associative key algebra. Through this product. This uh, product gives, as we can see pretty obviously, a gn times gm is going to be inside their sum. And these elements of gn are said to be of order n. Degree n, not, not order. I'm sure that does matter. I mean, you gotta be clear with your terms, right? And this graded algebra 
we have just made is the graded algebra associated with the filtered algebra of U. Now we're going to let phi of n be composition of the canonical k linear mappings from tn to to its image in u of un to its quotient with u1 one minus 1 as g to the n. So phi to the n is just taking elements directly from, it's taking, um, yeah, homogeneous tensors of order n and putting them into the their image in the in the enveloping algebra with their quotient of the lower the next order below. Whoops. Now we have that t to the n is of course supplementary to t to the lower n minus 1 inside of t to the n just by definition pretty obviously then phi n is going to be surjective And the set of these the n define a k linear map. And we're just gonna that's just gonna be phi of T onto G and keep in mind this is quote that these are just the sum, direct sum of these t to the n to the direct sum of these g n. Now let's let's try to talk about this proposition. So this mapping phi of t to g is an algebra homomorphism and it is of course injective. I like to write it before and they write it after which always gives me problems. Injective homomorphism and it is zero. on the two-sided ideal generated by x tensor y minus y tensor x. This is of course going to be inside of G. These oh well, these x and y are going to be from G. And what is our proof? Well, 
I'm going to take an element t from some t to the n, and we're going to take some t prime from a different t to the p, then phi of t, phi of t prime, remember how the product works and how this phi works, this is pretty obviously going to be their product. And this gives phi is as a homomorphism and that one that preserves our units. Or identities, or whatever you want to call those. I'm going to take x and y be two elements from G. Then this um, element, which is one of the elements that generates our ideal that we want to be zero over, is going to be inside of T2. And this has a canonical image of the bracket of x and y in u2 because that's where V is going to send this image to in U2 because, you know, that's that's by definition of how the universal algebra works. But we see that the bracket of X and Y is clearly going to be in, also going to be in U1 because it is the bracket of two elements in U1. which means that this image in g to the n, which is u2 over u1, is going to be just the identity. It's going to get subsumed by that quotient, which means phi of x tensor y minus y tensor x equals zero, as desired. All right, so now we're going to let S be the symmetric algebra. of the key module G. G is a key module. Remember that the symmetric algebra is isomorphic to the um, quotient, the um, polynomial ring because of the, um, I mean, we saw that last time. It's the tensor product, but with the tensor being commutative, essentially. And we're going to that TAF from T, the tensor algebra, onto the symmetric algebra, be the canonical homomorphism. Our previous proposition, which we just showed, there exists a unique homomorphism injective homomorphism they really like to bury the fact that it's injective 
omega from the symmetric algebra onto this uh, graded version of the universal algebra such that this our map phi from t to g is equal to the composition of taf from t to the s being the canonical homomorphism and this omega from s to g. And they write this in a pretty good way. That omega of some s to the n gets is equal to taf is equal to sorry phi of t to the n which is equal to g to the n. We're going to let t sub taf subscript n be the restriction of taf to t to the n. Similarly, omega n, the restriction of omega to t to the n. Um, C n, the canonical mapping of t to the n to u sub n. And likewise, theta n, the canonical mapping of u sub n, the universal algebra, n to the graded algebra on n. By definition, we have a diagram commute that commutes from all of our definitions here. which looks like we've got t to the n, which we have the canonical image via c of n into u to the n. We also have, we can look at its image under taf sub n to this s to the n. And we want to send them eventually to g to the n. And this way we can do by the canonical map theta n. And this way we can do by our hypothetical map here omega sub n. So this top path from t to the n to, to g, n, g to the n through the universal u n consists of canonical mappings. I should, I guess, right here, this data n is also the canonical map. And we have t to the n to the s at the n being the decomposition of the canonical maps from t to the n to s to the n. And we want to see that we can find, and we're looking for this omega map. And it's just everything lines up as we want here by this diagram, and so we're good. Alrighty. Let's go on to another proposition, which I may have to look at the detail of real quick. So we have if our algebra, if our ring K is Noetherian, which is a term I have learned the definition of but cannot recite off the top of my head, and G is a finitely generated module then u as a ring 
is both right and left. No theory. Now, what does it mean for a ring to be Notherian? Notherian ring is a ring that for an increasing sequence of left or right ideals, there is a largest element, which essentially means a ring is left Notherian if every left ideal is finitely generated. just like as a module. And likewise for the right Notherian. And just if we call it just Notherian if it is both left and right Notherian. So every ideal of K is finitely generated and G is a module which is finitely generated. And so are the universal you want to show that the universal algebra of it as a ring is also Notherian. Every ideal is finitely generated. So we have that S is a finitely generated. Algebra over K. And since it is finitely generated, any of its ideals has to thus be finitely generated, I believe. And so it is a Notherian ring. I don't actually know how to pronounce that name for sure. I hope I'm doing a good job. Hence, G above, which is isomorphic to a quotient ring of S, is Notherian. which since u is so closely tied to g's before and u is right and left Notherian. All right. Where is my pencil? Get a corollary. So we're going to let F be a field. Well, we'll call it K for consistency, but in this case it is a field. As opposed to it being a ring as before. And G finite dimensional over K. Let I going to be a collection of going to pick a direction. We're going to say right ideals. They could, this will obviously work with the left ideals too. A finite codimension. In you. Then the product ideal of these ideals is once again of a finite codimension dimension 
and so proof by induction. So essentially, we can continually we can continually lump a chain of ideals into like one and the product of the rest, which means we have a way to like induce it. And since the case of a single ideal is trivial, we only need to look at the case for two ideals. We can say the rate U module I one is generated by a finite number of elements UI from one to say P. Going to let a set of elements of V from one to say Q be elements of U use, use classes. Modulo I2 generate the vector space U over I2. Then the canonical images in, sorry, in I one over the product of I one and I two. of each u to the i, v to the j. And generate this i1 over i1, i2. Making it finite dimensional. the k dimension of u over i1 i2 is equal to the sum of the k dimension of u over i1 plus the k dimension of i1 over i1 i2 which as we saw is finite. Guess we're going to end here with one more remark, which might take a some time. I don't know. Remark. We're going to let G prime be another Lie algebra. I shouldn't even bother going back to, fi to fix letters, dude. Over the ring K, U prime 
It's in developing algebra. You prime n a set of elements of U prime of filtration of at most n, as you'd expect. And use the n similarly for u prime. The canonical images in u of the homogeneous symmetric tensors of G uh, they're going to be respectively G prime of order N now we're going to we're going to let Eta. I think that's eta. From G to G prime B homomorphism with a corresponding homomorphism or not her corresponds corresponding Eta hat from U into U prime. And then we see that eta hat sends each um, filtration order n to its inside its equivalent on the other side, and similarly for these canonical images of the homogeneous symmetric tensors of order n. In particular, the principal anti-automorphism of you leaves both of, the, of these un stable yeah. the k linear mapping from Tn onto itself which maps basically reverses the order of x1 tensor through xn to everything just backwards is a symmetry operator and hence leaves fixed the homogeneous
symmetric tensors of order n. Hence the principal anti automorphism of you induces on each of these u to the n the homo homothety or homothety don't know how to pronounce that and the ratio is going to be 1 on even dimension and negative 1 on odd dimension and our next topic for um, our series is the Poincaré Birkhoff Witt theorem, which is not something I want to be starting right now. That needs to be its own video. And so I'm going to double check. Uh, maybe a little bit of a shorter video today, but I feel like given how much, how often we go over time, I feel comfortable ending this video right here. So yeah.